After eagerly pre-ordering back in July and enduring an eight month wait, my Framework Laptop 16 has finally arrived. You might think I'm late to the party since other reviews surfaced a couple of weeks ago, but in fact, I'm right on schedule. Those early reviews were based on final validation pre-production units, not what I have here. My device is the real deal, a 100% final batch one retail version straight from the assembly line and among the first few hundred to hit the streets. It's the very same model that everyone who pre-ordered should receive. Today marks the first installment in my deep dive series into the Framework 16. I'll be unboxing, assembling, and setting up this laptop, sharing my initial thoughts on the process and evaluating the fit and finish. Plus, I'll tackle some of the burning questions you've sent my way. Make sure to stay tuned till the end because I've got the inside scoop on the upcoming videos in the Framework 16 series. Now, without further ado, Let's unveil this beast. It's the money. Now, I should also mention, this is a DIY version. I'll go through the parts and pieces I selected and why while I unbox this, but it also means that based on varying configurations, the unboxing experience can be different for each person. So, right on top, we have our pre-order special. So we got a poster and we got some stickers and a little patch. And it looks like our little user manual here. And as a pre-order special, that also came with a license key for uh, Starfield, which I've actually been using for several months now. I didn't have to wait to get the laptop with it. As soon as Starfield launched, I got that license key. So I'm gonna set those aside. Now I have my bezel. I just got the plain black plastic bezel. Got the keyboard. And again, this is just the plain black US English basic keyboard. Shouldn't be the RGB version. Along with the keyboard, I did get the numpad. So there's just the basic numpad. And then there's a couple set of spacers. I should get a regular set of just the gray spacers and then a set of the black spacers. All right, so there's a black spacer. And of course, the framework screwdriver, which should be able to assemble this entire system. All right, and here is, I assume where if I got any of the expansion modules that there's would come in this spot, but you'll see why those aren't here in a minute. And I'm thinking this is my 180 watt charger. Yep, there's the nice, look at that. That right there, that's a 180 watt charger. Look how small that is. And there it is. This is the laptop itself. So let's get that out of here. Let me open that in a second. There's something else in the box. All right, yeah. Laptop and of course, this is, I think this is the interconnect for the expansion bay. And then I have my basic expansion bay shell. This is the sh shell that just houses the two fans, not the GPU. And that is it. Got it. You got to appreciate the packaging. This is 100% just plain cardboard, paper, no plastic or foam. I can throw all of this mess right into my recycling bin. Now let's get this laptop itself open. Again, this is just a Basically a thick parchment paper. 
We even, I don't even have it assembled yet and it already, it feels pretty, pretty hefty. All right, let's open this up. Oh, I spoke a little too soon. There is some plastic in the packaging here, a little uh, protector inside between the display and the disassembled main deck of the computer. Inside here I have pre-installed are the gray spacers here and the standard trackpad is installed, pre-installed into the system. Now, the total here comes to $2,329.69. Yet, you might have noticed this is not a complete computer. Opting for the DIY version allows me to bring my own components to the table. So, I've selected a 32 gigabyte kit of crucial DDR5-5600 memory a one terabyte Sabrent Rocket 2230 M.2 SSD for my boot drive and a four terabyte 2280 M.2 SSD to serve as my library drive. Additionally, I'm setting aside a partition on this SSD for a Linux install. And since I own all of the framework expansion modules, I'll be choosing these six, which I'll be discussing during assembly. This all adds up to a grand total of $2,716. There's no easy way to say it. That's a steep price for this laptop just based on the specs. I actually remember a famous tech YouTuber once saying that they don't consider the cost of an item when reviewing it, suggesting that like a laptop is either good or bad regardless of its price. To me, that's just one of the most misguided takes I've ever heard from a professional reviewer, spoken like, well, a millionaire. For the majority of financially responsible middle-class consumers, cost is the primary concern when making a significant purchase. We want assurances that we're getting our money's worth. If we perceive that we're getting more than what we paid for, that's a huge win. If less, it's a letdown. While my approach to reviewing any product remains the same no matter the cost, the actual price tag certainly informs my overall judgment regarding price to performance ratio or the value. And that's exactly how I'll be approaching the series on the Framework 16. Just to note, right out of the box, this laptop is $800 to $1,000 more expensive than other comparably specced 16 inch laptops. But we can't overlook the potential long term cost savings thanks to its unprecedented user serviceability, repairability, and potential upgradability. We'll have to see how that factors into the actual or perceived value of the system. But first, Let's get this thing put together and I'm going to do it just like any typical consumer by following the framework's assembly guide step by step. This way I can assess the process, see how long it takes, and I'll share my thoughts afterward. Okay, let's do this. minutes and 15 seconds was what it took to assemble it. Not bad at all. Before I discuss that assembly process, I want to see how long it takes to just swap out the dedicated GPU with the standard expansion bay. So let's check that out. 
for time's sake and to keep this video family friendly, we'll also speed up this part because while I discovered some weird choices in the design, oh, that whole thing comes off. I'll lose that. Jeez. The biggest issue was the fitment of the standard expansion module. It's not going in straight. While the GPU module slid in and out easily, the other one did not. I did go through this exercise about five times and while I could swap in the GPU in under three minutes, the fastest time I recorded for the shell was about five and a half minutes. Okay, that was eventful. I have thoughts, but first let me get an operating system installed. I'm gonna start with Windows and reading through the framework Windows 11 installation guide. It looks like due to the MediaTek Wi-Fi adapter, I have to prepare the installation media for an offline install. So let me get that done and Windows installed just to make sure all the hardware is actually connected and working. Following the framework guide and using my framework 13, I was able to download the appropriate software and the Windows 11 ISO and create the installation media. To answer a question, the first boot of the framework 16 was quick and I was able to enter the boot selection menu in under two minutes. From there, I selected the thumb drive and began a very streamlined Windows install. To answer another question, the 2230 showed up in the Windows Partition Manager as the primary drive, however both SSDs were available and I could choose to install the OS to either one. Once the installation process was complete, I ran the framework driver installation executable, which I had already saved to the thumb drive, and after a few minutes and a reboot, all the hardware and devices were present and working properly. Okay, now that everything is set up and running, let's take a closer look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's start on a high note with the good. The overarching concept of the framework laptop isn't new, but it's nostalgically echoes the era when you could tailor a laptop to your exact needs. I remember my very first laptop purchase in the late 90s from Gateway, a company that back then was known for solid customizable systems, not the lower end products found in Walmart today. Dell, HP, IBM, many companies offered built to order laptop computers. Framework is reviving that tradition in a significant way. The DIY version of the Framework laptop is a no brainer, particularly since it allows you to bring your own RAM storage and operating system, which is a smart move considering the premium framework charges for those components. Another strength is the user-friendly step-by-step guides that Framework publishes. They empower even the most inexperienced DIYers to assemble their system with ease. However, even seasoned builders should take a moment to watch the short assembly videos. I learned this the hard way when I struggled with installing the expansion card interposer. And that's not lined up now. The screws just wouldn't line up. If I had watched the five second video, I would have known to start with the front screw. The Windows installation guide was also incredibly straightforward, simplifying the process more than the typical media creation tool does. Framework self-extracting executable, which installs all the required drivers with a single click, made the setup process the smoothest I've ever experienced, from a blank slate to a fully functional laptop in record time. The display lid and hinges 
are another high point. The Framework 13 had initial issues with weak hinges and a wobbly screen, but this was corrected with a stiffer CNC machine top panel and stronger hinges. Framework has clearly taken this lesson to heart. The hinges on the 16 are tight, yet allow the lid to be opened with one hand, and once opened, it stays firmly in place with minimal wobble. The lid does have more than normal amount of flex, but it's not too bad, especially when you consider that it's a non-laminated component, and it's definitely less than that of the popular Alienware M16. The display itself looks great at first glance. While I'll conduct more thorough testing to verify specifications, my initial impression is that the screen is bright and clear. Despite a lower PPI than expected for a 16-inch screen, everything appears sharp and well-defined. IPS glow might be visible on camera, but to the naked eye, it's virtually non-existent. However, the display is not without issues. I can definitely see vignetting at the edges and particularly the corners, so uniformity is a concern. There's also a spot at the top where the bezel is pinching the LCD, causing bleed. I'll need to address that, perhaps by gently sanding down the bezel to flatten it out. Unfortunately, from this point on, I have to delve into the not so good aspects. One of the first things I noticed is that Framework has reused at least a few components from the 13 inch model in this larger, more expensive 16 inch laptop where they arguably shouldn't have. For starters, they've retained the same camera and microphone assembly from the 13 inch version. While the 1080p camera is decent, the microphone was one of the weakest points on the 13 inch model. It's borderline unusable, an area that definitely needed improvement. They also recycled the same keyboard, which isn't inherently bad. It has a slightly mushy feel at the bottom of each keystroke, something I'll expand on shortly. The issue here is the size. It's simply not proportionate to the 16 inch laptop. With both the keyboard and number pad installed, the keyboard is too far to the left, making it uncomfortable to type on. It feels like my hand's gonna fall off the side of the deck. And with the number pad removed and the keyboard centered, it looks and feels perceptually small for the deck size. I found myself frequently hitting the shift and caps lock key when aiming for the A and Z keys. A modular keyboard is a fantastic concept, but it should have been redesigned to efficiently and ergonomically utilize the space provided. Many of you guys asked about deck flex and it seems to have been a concern for other reviewers. I can confirm that it's definitely noticeable, though not terrible. It does, however, make the bottom of the keystroke feel more mushy, and it will be apparent if you're used to the Framework 13, which uses the same keyboard but mounted on a rock solid deck. The trackpad, again, taken from the 13 inch model, is completely undersized for this laptop. It's another component that could have seen improvement, especially considering the higher price tag of the 16 inch model. Now, there's a minor issue with the deck itself that might be irrelevant to others, but I find the fact that there are 16 screws to loosen just to access the internals a bit annoying. From an engineering perspective, I understand why it's necessary. Since nothing is clipped or glued together, all those fastening points are needed to provide rigidity across the deck, and it succeeds in that. However, it would have been nice to have a smaller quick access panel for the SSD and perhaps the memory for easier swap outs. But I'll get into that more as I proceed with this series. The process for swapping out the GPU also feels a bit cumbersome. While not complicated after the first or second try, it's more time consuming than the original launch video suggested. This certainly makes me less inclined to swap out the GPU for the smaller expansion bay when I'm just heading out to a coffee shop or library to get some work done that doesn't require dedicated graphics. We'll have to see how that affects battery life as I do more testing. Now we've arrived at the ugly part of the initial impressions. The top concern you guys asked about is the overall fit and finish, which frankly doesn't meet the expectations for a laptop retailing for over $2,000. I've already touched on the bezel issue causing screen pinching, perhaps an easy fix, but nonetheless not one I should have to make right out of the box. The fit of the keyboard deck modules also leaves something to be desired. There are minor gaps in the panels, which aren't ideal for keeping out moisture and debris, but more of a concern is the uneven alignment 
The spacer on the right side isn't too bad. It's a bit off higher at the bottom than at the top, not flush with the left side of the chassis. However, the left spacer sticks way up no matter what I do. And that corner is actually pretty sharp, not comfortable when I drag my palm across it. The finish on the modules lacks the refinement expected at this price point. For instance, these three silver modules are noticeably different shades of silver. It might not be evident on camera, but to the naked eye, it's clear. Initially, I thought it might be an illusion caused by light reflection angles, but after closer inspection, the shades are definitely different. But the most significant issue I encountered was with the standard expansion bay. This accessory comprising merely of two small fans cost an additional $100 and feels surprisingly cheap with a lot of flimsy plastic. Unlike the GPU expansion, which slides in smoothly and effortlessly, this standard bay is problematic. I don't know what it was, but now let's just go. Boom, perfect. Now, let's check this out. Nope. Nope. Nope, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Perfect. It twists, it gets caught and requires a considerable amount of effort to attach properly to the chassis. I actually got super frustrated with this thing and had to take a deep breath and count to 10. Now, just one of these issues on its own, no big deal and easily fixed with a message to customer service, but added together, all in a single retail unit is problematic. But that wraps up what I've got for you today. My initial impressions are a bit of a mixed bag. On the one hand, as many of you know, I've been all in on the serviceability, repairability, upgradeability, and of course the sheer joy of tinkering that framework offers. I've backed them up with my wallet, investing around six grand in their gear so far. A minor splash for some, but for me, it's a significant chunk of change. I'm rooting for them to succeed and keep on delivering top-notch products, but at first glance and just on the surface, it feels like this is a step backward from the Framework 13. But again, that's just my first impression. There's plenty more on the horizon that could definitely sway my overall conclusion. Unlike typical reviews that rush through superficial benchmarks and forced comparisons, I'm taking a different route. This laptop isn't just a review unit for me. It's stepping into my daily life to take on multiple roles. It's set to replace my desktop gaming PC, to take over from my Framework 13 for everyday tasks, sideline my Mac Studio for video editing, and even accompany me as as my travel companion for content creation, bidding farewell to my MacBook Pro. In the coming weeks, expect multiple videos as I'll be pushing the framework to its limits across every real world workflow imaginable, from editing the videos you watch to creating thumbnails, scripting the narratives, crunching data, and 3D designing. I'm throwing it all at this machine. Expect deep dives into engineering with Fusion 360, crafting game assets with ZBrush and Maya, VXF creation in After Effects and Blender, and rigorous development work in Unreal Engine and Unity. I'll I'll even explore various Linux distros, not to mention get in some serious gaming. Additionally, I'll address your specific inquiries with focused short videos, think dual booting Windows and Linux, keyboard customization with VIA or QMK, and more. And naturally, I'll distill all these experience into a traditional comprehensive review, more deeply covering display quality, battery life efficiency, build quality, and yes, I'll even sprinkle in some traditional benchmarks. There's a lot to look forward to, so make sure you hit that subscribe and ring the bell to stay updated on all the upcoming content, and I'll see you soon.